and welcome to this episode of the Lehigh Valley with Love podcast. I'm your host, George Wacker, and today we have the one and only Tony Danza, an American icon on television, screen, stage, and in our hearts. He's coming to Steel Stacks on April 5th in Bethlehem for his newest one-man show, Standards and Stories. Combining timeless music with wit, charm, storytelling, and a dash of soft shoe, along with some ukulele performances, Tony Danza performs a selection of his favorite standards from the Great American Songbook while interweaving stories about his life and personal connection to the music. Today, I ask him some of your questions. We talk about his career from its beginnings in the gym to his big break with Taxi, to his time on Who's the Boss, and most recently, Raising Canaan. We also talk about that song lyric, Hold Me Closer, Tony Danza, and what he thinks about it. Thank you so much to our partners, WDIY, Wind Creek Event Center, Michael Bernadine with Remax Real Estate, Molly's Irish Grill and Sports Pub, and Banco Beverage Company. Visit lvwithlove.com to get more information on all of them. So let's get to it. Introducing Mr. Tony Danza. Hey, Mr. Danza. Boys, How are hey, you? Boys, man. <laughs> I just, you know, I just read, I just, I opened the paper just now. Sure. I saw this thing, this, this obituary. You know who died? Her, her name was Mary White, and she was the lead singer of the Shangri La's, leader of the pack. Remember that song? I do. I mean, That's I, when I, I remember that. Her, the leader of the pack. Yeah, she died. Well, I don't know what's going on. She had a pulmonary disease. What's 75. Yeah, man, man. Holy crap. Sorry, man. I, I just opened no. the paper wait, waiting for you. Waiting for the phone. What's happening? <laughs> no, I, How are you doing? I mean, it's it's a it's a bummer to start off like that, but that's some of the music you grew up on, right? Like you you love that stuff. Oh, oh yeah, that stuff. You know what else too? I had an older cousin. Mm-hmm. He was like five five years older than me. My cousin Pat, not around anymore either. But he uh, he took me in under his wing when I was a little kid. Told me mm-hmm. how to drive a stick. <laughs> and, but he took me under his wing, and I, he, I learned all his music. So the doo wop, the doo wop stuff, and the leader of the pack, we sure the Shangri Las and all that. But that was, yeah, that was all stuff I, I fancied. People are excited to see you here in in Bethlehem in the Lehigh yeah, Valley, yeah. but but you have to love it too, don't yeah, you, you? Just you, to you, get you, out you, there you, on stage. George, you have to understand something. So mm-hmm. in 1993, I hit a tree. Mm-hmm. And I almost killed myself. I break my back. I'm in intensive care for three weeks. I used to do a joke that when I woke up, when I woke up in, in, in the hospital, I looked up, everybody was crying, including the priest. And mm-hmm. I said, geez, I think I need a second opinion. So that was a joke. <laughs> That's how bad it was, right? So yeah. like, it took me like two years. It took me like two years to come back from it. Uh, and it, it happened at a bad time because they had just done Angels in the Outfield and ready to be a mm-hmm. movie star. And this thing happened. Anyway, the wind up of the story is, it's like I, I, in my recovery, which took two years, I, I tried to, what, what do I want to do? I'm getting a second chance because there was a chance sure. I wasn't going to walk. It was a mess. So right. I, I said, what, what did I do? What haven't I done? And I wanted to be a song and dance man. And I had been tap dancing for about 10 years by that time. And um, I just, uh, I got a guy, uh, Buzz Cohen, the great uh, uh, vaudevillian writer and he came and mm-hmm. wrote, helped me write an act and we started and you know George here's the thing you 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 can't learn how to do this I mean some guys just have this great voice they can go out there it doesn't matter you know but right, you yeah. on and open your mouth you can't learn that from somebody or from a book you gotta go right. do it yeah, and, and you gotta suffer, and you suffer, and you suffer the slings and arrows sometimes, babe. Because you know, sure. sometimes you stink, and you're out there, and you're out there, and you gotta <laughs> get over that hump of. Well, I got over it, and now it's basically the greatest gift of all time. It's like I get to go do it, and, and the more fun I have, the more fun the people have. And what I try to do, aside from really the, the, the main goal of this kind of a show, is is to make a connection. Right, you know, to have people relate to the stories you tell and the songs you sing, have the songs enhance the stories, the stories enhance the songs, and and then make a connection. But what I really want to do too is I want to make them laugh. Mm-hmm. This is not a concert. This is a laugh thing. This is a show. You know, you're supposed to enjoy yourself so that when you leave, you got some laughs. You saw, you heard some songs, but we made a connection. But it's more than just. And I try to do. You know what it's like, George. <laughs> Yeah. I was thinking about this the other day. It's like one of those old TV variety shows. 
Sure, yeah. Well, you had a, you, you have a host and a bunch of acts, right? Mm-hmm. Well, in my show, I'm the host and I'm all the <laughs> and act. the act. <laughs> and, and I mean, I do like you know, I try to do a bunch of stuff, you know. Not only we sing and tell stories, but we dance. And I got, you know, I tap dance. They got a great band. What do you hear the piano player? And it gets, I mean, this is an unbelievable band. And then, you know, I tap, and then I bring out my secret weapon. You know, the ukulele yeah. comes out. Oh, I've and heard about this ukulele. Way, <laughs> well, I, you know, what I try to do is adapt the American songbook to the ukulele. Right. Where do you hear Billy? Where do you hear Billy Holiday on the ukulele? <laughs> I love, well, what's what interesting. Working. To me, like you're talking about tap dancing, like when you say you were doing it for 10 years, that means you started at like 30, 35. Is it, is it fun for you to try all these new things? Like you said, like n- never stop you know performing and learning. You know what happened? I was a crummy student when I was a kid. I just got by. Yeah. I was smart enough to get by and not do any work. So I'm the teacher and get mm-hmm. through it, you know. But now all I want to do is be a student. I had a voice lesson this yeah. night. It's great. I have a voice listening this morning. Because, yeah, it's like I want to learn new stuff. Like, you know, the tap dancing thing was the last year of Taxi. And we did a show where we pretended to tap dance in a, in a fantasy, right. Mary Lou's fantasy. And I went, that day I drove home I was, and I stopped at the studio and I met a teacher and I, I've been dancing ever since. I got a lesson. Which, I had a lesson. I got a lesson. This, this, I got a lesson on, on the calendar. I mean, I got so a class. You, so, I just I'm I'm trying to learn new stuff all the time. I'm trying to be, right. you know. And by the way, I'm getting older, so you know you 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 know, you feel the clock ticking too. Well, I feel like you got to reinvent yourself a little bit. You know, your career has spanned all those you know, so many fantastic things. When you look back on it, you know you know do do you pick out any one thing here and there? Well, you know, you think about this case. You know, it's 45 years ago. Taxi premiered, right? Um, and uh, so, you know, getting that break, you know, a lot of people get breaks in Hollywood because, you know, the, you get a break, you, you're cheaper. <laughs> you know what I mean? So a lot of people- You were in a break. gym, right? You were in a gym, so, weren't you? Yeah, I was fighting. I was, I was boxing. Yeah, I had 50 pro fights and I was, you know, mm-hmm. going to be champion of the world. <laughs> and the guy walked into the gym and said, hey, you think about being on TV. And I, you know, I, and, they, and then boom, somehow I end up in Jim Brooks's office uh, reading for a taxi. But I mean, you know, Getting something like that, a break like that, a lot of people get breaks, right. but they don't get taxes. They don't get a, you know, the best show on TV. And you got to remember too. Imagine those people in that show. Yeah. <laughs> they've been knocking around. They studied. They became, you know, they became actors. Absolutely. Now they're knocking around. They were knocking around Hollywood. They and boom, they get a series. And remember, we're talking about when there were only three networks. So if you get a right. series, holy crap, it's huge. So now they get a series. Not only did they get a series. It's going to be on the hot network, which was ABC at the time. It's going to be after the number one show on right. TV, the Freeze Company. And it's going to have the greatest writers in the world uh, from, from Mary Tyler Moore and the greatest director, Jim Burroughs, is going to direct. I mean, they got everything except, oh, wait, there's this uh, one thing. There's this fighter we found <laughs> in New York. And he's never <laughs> acted before professionally, but we're going to put him in the show. And was I that, wonder how I would react now. You know what I mean? George? Yeah. Was anybody, did anybody welcome? push back? No, oh, they welcomed me with open arms. That's fantastic. And, it was the, and it's the reason why I was able to do it. Right. Because I think they, they encouraged me and, and it was wonderful. And so you, so you have that. And then I get, who's the boss? I mean, could you imagine what that eight years was like? No, I, I'll be honest. Like, I, I've watched every episode of Who's the Boss. Like, it, it's amazing to be talking to you right now. But it must be amazing to to for you just to be a part of that. You know, like, yeah, to just be a part of it. Like now, I want you to know. Right now, I'm doing a show. I'm really proud. Of. It's really fun. It's a terrific show. It's called Raising Canaan on yep. uh, on Stars. Mm-hmm. And I'm in a good. Show. I'm in, I'm still in a good. Show. I'm like this is unbelievable. I'm still <laughs> You're not doing bad, and I'm. <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm telling you, I'm. I'm. I, I, and you know what else? My kids are all happy right now too. That's great. My three kids. Yeah. So I, I'm. You know that old saying: you're only as happy as your least happy child. <laughs> so, so I'm in good shape all around. That's good. Yeah, I had a couple of questions from, from people. people in the Lehigh Valley. I know we have a couple minutes. If you don't mind me asking you a few, I got you. Um, got plenty of time. Go ahead. 
All right. Uh, one of my good friends was asking about one of his favorite movies, the garbage picking field goal kicking Philadelphia phenomenon. <laughs> Can you talk about that a little bit? <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, it was, you know, it, 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 first of all, you know, my father's a garbage man. That's why I took I didn't job. know that. Okay. My yeah. Was a gar- yeah, my father was a garbage man. So they sent me the script. I looked at it and I'm like, I don't know. You want to play garbage man on TV? I what the hell? My father was a garbage man. It would be so great. Yeah. So I did the show, and it and it was it's a it's a fun it's really a fun movie, and it and and if you and it's heavy in a way too because mm-hmm. what happens to the guy is he gets infected with fame, mm-hmm. and he changes, it. and then he has and he realizes that he comes back and everything else. But but it's it's just one of those it, that's you know that's the goal. That's what I think. You know, people talk about the streaming age as the peak TV. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. That was a movie that was made for TV. Yeah. You could watch and, a movie. And we watched that at a time. Like, he remembered that right away. Like, that's an important movie to him. Um, and, and it's, <laughs> it's, it's, and he, it's funny. He's like, we can't find it on streaming. So he has a physical copy. Um, I think it's on Prime. Oh, is it? Okay, we'll have to take a look. I think so. Yeah, I think it is. I watched, I watched one the other night. Like this girl I'm seeing made me watch an old movie. What the hell was it? What the hell one would that I watch? You know, I I made a lot of those. Oh yeah, you know I made a lot of. <laughs> that's in the days they used to pay you. Listen, they used to take you to Toronto, right, uh, or to Vancouver, and you would uh, and you'd work four weeks, four and weeks on a movie. Boom, boom, boom! You did a movie. You went back. It was the greatest job of all time. Right. Oh, please. Well, you, you talked about raising Canaan. Um, somebody asked me, you know, why did you decide to, it's more of a drama power series, right? You know, how did that yeah. come about for you? How do you feel about that? It's a totally different than the, the, the garbage picking field goal kicker. Yeah, you know, oh, no. about- <laughs> it's very different from a lot of, I've only done one or two roles like this before, but this, um, I was, I'll be honest, perfectly honest. I was uh, reluctant I have mm-hmm. oh, I have never had to play the Italian trope, the uh, mm-hmm. mafia guy, right? Uh, and so I I was lucky, and I and I'm a little sensitive, and I'm sensitive to it, you know. I mean, a lot sure. of my friends, by the way, Vinny Pastore always says to me, "Hey, that's the only thing I get to play. What are you talking about? You know what I mean?" <laughs> so I, I, I I've been lucky, but this job came along, and I, I was I wasn't going to do it. I actually, and then. My the actor in it was Michael Raspoli was the other actor in the scene, which who mm-hmm. I really like and is a friend and, and is a really terrific actor. And um, and I said I hadn't worked in a while, and I said well, let me go do it, see what it feels like. And I did it. And mm-hmm. I'll be honest with you, I didn't think they were going to buy me as the bad guy. Right. Well, yeah, I could I could and, and, see that. And yeah. So I, yeah, so I came home and I called my agent and I, I don't know. He says, well, let's see what happens. He calls me back two days later. He says, not only do they want do they, they want you to come back for next year, they want to give you five episodes. So somehow I ended up, and it's a terrific show. It really, I mean, it, you know, it's a family drama, basically. It just sure. happens to be a crime family. Yeah. Right. <laughs> hey, you know, we got to tell their stories, too. Um, I got a scene this afternoon. We're going to do a reading right after this. I get the reading okay. today for the next episode. And uh, I got a scene so this neat. week with, with Kanan, with the kid. So I know I'm making That's an neat. interview here with the, oh God, this is, where's this going? I got a That's feeling so I'm going to get whacked soon. No, I hope not. I got to keep Tony Dan's <laughs> on. You can't, can't kill him off. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know if you know the Lehigh Valley, Bethlehem area is in the Lehigh Valley. Yeah. It's a huge it's a huge wrestling area. We have some of the best wrestlers come out of here. Um I you know, know I, that. of course I you, know that. You're a wrestler, you know, uh do you ever look back at your times fighting or wrestling and take even some of those lessons? I know it's been a while, but you know, do you ever think back oh, to no. those days too? Of course. Yeah. You know, of course. I mean, first of all, uh when I wrestled in college, the uh, they had a state champion at my weight class, so I had to suck weight. Yeah. And I, I lived, I lived on salt tablets and jello. Sure, and, yeah, uh, it was the worst. That was the worst. But you know, determination—you want to get someplace, you know. Uh, by the way, 
a college fund won out over that after a while. I said, hey, to heck with this. Uh, mm-hmm. But boxing, you know, boxing changed my life. Boxing mm-hmm. uh, gave me a different kind of discipline because, you know, I always tell people, you when you're a fighter, you always think the other guy's working out. <laughs> He's mm-hmm. training. Yeah. So you got to, you know, you got to be trained. So it's just this other determination. And I just think, you know, it, uh, it it's a guilty pleasure because I got my head knocked around way too much. <laughs> but um, but I think it also it, it also strengthened me uh, in ways that uh, that I don't think, you know, you you, you, you you climb through ropes in your underwear and fight a guy. Right. In front you of everybody, one, right? You know, I, one night, one time, one time I lost, I lost and I was sitting in the, in the, uh, in the dressing room. Uh, pretty bummed out and the trainer this guy Chicky Ferrara great old man did a great one of the greats came in he walked in he said he looked at me and he said hey, what are you worried about there's only two guys in there one of you had to lose <laughs> yeah, I mean so yeah, yeah. I, very comforting I wanted to punch him in the nose but <laughs> um, my point but the point being is that when you you put yourself on the line like that you know there's only you mm-hmm. know you just yeah, it's, it, 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 and that's part of it, that putting yourself on the line. Right, being able to put yourself out you there. Do. Yeah, you got to be able to to stick your chin out. Well, you don't want to stick your chin out, but you know what I mean. But be right. there, be present, be, be there. And uh, and and this kind of the gig, this gig, right. which is let me tell you, it's the fun, it's the most fun. Yeah, and what can people expect? Do, like it's like a, a variety show where I think the host and all the actors. I'm okay. going to try to make you laugh. I'm going to try to, you know, I'm going to sing a little bit. I'm going to dance a little bit. I'm going to play the ukulele. I'm going to, it's just, uh, it's going to be a fun night. It's a, the show is really, really fun. And, uh, and I, I enjoy, I enjoy, uh, you know, people have really, really enjoyed it. They, you know, it, it, it lands. That's the good news. Yeah. And you know, I, you know, I want, I don't want to just, I want people to get, you know, to have a good time. I want people to laugh. Yeah. I want people to work. Yeah, I want people to get their money's worth. So how's that? This is great. There's something. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, think. I, I mean, I just think that's what it's going to be. It's going to be uh, going to be a fun evening, and uh, and I and you'll hear the story of my mother meeting Frank Sinatra. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. I, I have one question. One more yeah. question to ask you. I'd be remiss if I did it because sure. so many people they asked me to ask you this. I mean, Tony, you are. You're you're a you're a part of America. You belong to us a little bit, you know. Um, and yeah. I think that's I think that's really neat. And one of the questions that people keep asking, I'm sure you know the song "Tiny Dancer," Elton John. And people yeah, cool. they change that lyric to "Hold Me Closer, Tony Danza," but in in such an endearing way. And so many people know that. I'm sure. Are you familiar with that? And what are your what are your thoughts on on that phenomenon? Well, first of all, you know where it you know where it comes from, right? You know I'm not the, quite, the genesis of it? You, you tell me. I'm not quite sure. The genesis of it is in the third season premiere of Friends. Okay. Lisa Kudrow, Phoebe, they're having a conversation about love songs. Uh-huh. And she says, I like that. Oh, I love that one about Elton John sings about Tony, about that who's <laughs> the boss guy. Yeah. <laughs> she goes, they go, what? And then she says, hold me close to Tony Danza. Way. The most romantic song ever was The Way We Were. Uh, see, I, I think the one that Elton John wrote for um, that guy on Who's the Boss. <laughs> what song is that, Phoebes? Um, hold me close, young Tony Danza. <laughs> right. And that began. Now, you realize that just less than a year ago, Elton John sang it with that lyric. With yeah. Tony Danza. He sang it. <laughs> He did it online, him and Courtney Cox. Right. And uh, I don't know who else is Lisa Kudrow, this is for you. One, two, three. So this is like, this thing has haunted me for years. What are you kidding me? In fact, <laughs> wait a minute. I got, I'm not kidding you. I have a, I have a cup that I use every day. Yeah. Metal cup. You hear it? Yeah. 
right? And look what it says. Hold me closer, Tony Danza. That's perfect. <laughs> That's what it says on it. So, yes, I'm aware of it. Well, no, I love it. I was a little nervous to ask you, but it was just so, because it's just like you're you're so beloved. It's an honor to, to have you come to our city and perform, and we know I so many wait. people are, are looking forward to it. So I, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time. George, it's been a pleasure to talk to you, man. Good luck. Keep your chin down. Hey, and listen, if you come to the show, come say hello. I'm going to. I'm definitely going to. Take. All, right. All, right. All right, good. All right. Okay. Tony, thank, thank you so you much. Have, have a great day. Thank you. I'm up. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you again to Tony Danza for taking some time out and coming on our show. That was amazing. Catch him on April 5th for his newest one-man show, Standard and Stories, at Steel Stacks in Bethlehem. Steelstacks.org is where you're going to get your tickets. Thank you to our partners, WDIY, Wind Creek Event Center, Michael Bernadin of Remax Real Estate, Molly's Irish Grill and Sports Pub, and Banco Beverage Company. I'm your host, George Wacker, with the Lee Valley with Love podcast, and we'll catch you next time. Thank you so much.